All right. So real quick here, uh, it's a normal day, so I'm not going to be doing power hour. Premiums are super low as well. Uh, but here's what I've done today so far. So had my O2 DTE call calendar, small winner. Uh, some JSPs hit 50%. My AM ratio 945 trade. Half of it hit 40%. Half got stopped out for about 19%. Uh, my quiet midday tranches all hit 40%. My NDX trade is currently at 64%. Unless we have a big move, that should... Looks like it should stay in range to hit max profit. And then on my challenge portfolio... Had a 3-2, stopped out for a profit after I reduced stop and, and closed half. My a one to one, same thing. So 20%, 20%, 27%. Uh, and then I had a stop out just on that big flush. And then I've got my one DTE, which is currently up about 20%. And then my re-entries that re-entered here, one's up 8%, one's up about the same. So not too bad of a day except for that one big stop out right there and that had a little extra a little extra slippage for me as well and i'm i was trying to enter a power hour trade here i just uh, finally got filled on the 65 60s at 515 30 points wide and so for me i mean i'll, I'll, I'll go over here in a second let me put this oco order in So if I were to do tranche one right now, it'd be probably the 65 straddle, which I've already got two trades on the 65 straddle. So so I will not be loading up anymore at that price point. We got S and P's down fifteen. We got Nasdaq down one eighteen. Russell down thirteen. Dow down one eleven. Gold, a little bit red. Silver, a little bit red. Notes and bonds green. Ten-year yield down almost one percent. Oil down about a half percent. Natty gas up over five percent. Grains a little bit mixed. Euro and the pound slightly red. Bitcoin was up about ten percent. It's only up seven now, but that thing's taken off like a rocket. Hit 65,000 and then pulled back. We got any hodler, hodlers in the group? <clears throat> okay, here we go. Okay, for me, so AM, my first iron condor, I went 20, 40, 60 and out. My second one was stopped out. With no profits, so max loss. Lunchtime number one was uh, 20, 40, 60 and out, full profit. Lunchtime two, full stop. So even before my lunchtime number two stop, and even for today, I've been considering altering my. Um, I talked about this in there, I mentioned this in the Discord thinking of altering it to taking some chips off the table at 10% profit. <clears throat> and so what made me start thinking about this, I went back and looked at my January. I had 11 full losses in January out of, let me see. January total trade at at out of eighty nine trades I had eleven full losses. Okay, so far in February, um, had seventy six trades, not counting this week, and I've had twenty five full losses. And many times I'm within twenty cents or so of getting filled 
on 20% profit. So if I would have taken chips off the table at 10%, I mean, I'm not dealing with these full losses. And so like today, I mean, I'm currently down 2,700 bucks. But my two lo full losses equal 6,500. So, so the one chips the on one, table, the one issue with that, just yeah. devil's advocate is sure. obviously, so then, then your, your winners are going to be even less compared to your losers. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I'm wondering, like I've, I've considered like six contracts. Normally I take three contracts off at 20%, you know, thinking of, until we, I can, you know, with these days where you got these just, it's the 20 point, it's the 10 to 15 point moves in 20 minutes. You know, if I had six contracts taking instead of three off at 20, taking two off at 10, and then taking two more off at 20, you know, and kind of scaling out a little differently. <clears throat> and so I might start doing that in a separate account to see how that works for me. I think you should paper trade it. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, that's what <laughs> I would do. I would do it in my paper trading account. Gotcha. Let's see. I'm ready to reduce my stop here. So 22. Give me just a second here. Seven. All right. Okay, so my one DTE. I just hit 60% on lunchtime number one. Not great decay on the one DTE today, but it's up about a little over 20%. It's dead centered with an hour to go. Here we go again. We've got a six point move in 10 minutes. Yeah, I guess the question is, which you don't know, but yeah, how often are you hitting 10 or 15%? It's very easy to hit 10%. I mean, very right. easy. Yeah, I mean, I haven't figured in commissions or anything like that. I'm just, just kind of thinking out loud and looking at, you know, the the full losses just just they're when you have multiple, they're hard to overcome. Yeah, I think, and I think, I think that's just part of it. I mean, for example. I mean, trust me, I feel, I feel exactly what you're saying, but if, if I look at like my, uh, you know, my re-entries today, you know, I was up what, whatever it was, I was up over $7,000 and now I'm basically barely, barely green because of that one big stop out. Um, but I've, I've just, I've found in my trading with this type of kind of scaling is that you're over time, you're you're better off waiting as long as possible, mm -hmm. waiting for higher profits. And, and, and kind of what I settled on here, for example, because I was debating between, you know, twenty percent, thirty percent, lower, higher. Uh, and and when and when you're doing that, when I'm doing the testing, and looking at different scenarios for the same structure, you know, I opted. I ended up opting to go with at thirty percent. I'm taking half off and then I'm letting, and then I'm reducing my stop at that point. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I looked at 20%, like I said, I looked 20%, 10%, 50%. And the longer, in almost every case, the longer you wait to take those profits, like waiting till 50% or not taking profits at all and just reducing stop after you hit a certain level and not taking any off, that actually performs the best over time. <clears throat> yeah. But it's, but psychologically, it's very difficult. And right. so, so where I settled is at 30% because that's a, a really just a nice sweet spot for me where I'm still, you know, hitting the 30% profits a relatively high period of the time. Um, but it's high enough that it doesn't drag down my performance on the winners over time. So anyway, all that to kind of say, you just gotta, yeah, you gotta just find your sweet spot and what kind of yeah. works it. But, but when you get these, you know, like this big stop out, I was like, gosh, you know, I was yeah. up so much. And now I'm just, you know, up a little bit and yeah, so it, it sucks, but and, and I'm still green for the month big time, but it's like, you know, days like this, like, look here, we've got it just since we've been talking of a uh, 10 point move in 15 minutes and it's still going, you know? So I don't know. It's just, but then your biggest days are the ones that, you know, like yesterday, right. Or I don't know, but at least the first part of yesterday where it just is a mm-hmm. tight range all day. If you would have taken your profits early, you would have, you would have missed out on a bunch of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm my not, paper trade saying, to mess al- mess around with the contracts, like, you know, just see. Like I said, I'm my saying, first. I'm not. I'm not saying what you're contemplating is wrong. I'm just trying to get you to think through yeah. both sides. And you know, I'm trying. I'm sitting here thinking, okay, this the premiums too. Like now are just so power hour so it's hard to even enter trades yeah well yeah this low premium is just no bueno all the way around yeah look at the vix getting crushed on this little bounce down 30 cents on that little bounce Yeah, I've got my power hour trades off center, but I'm not not gonna enter another one. It's just the premiums aren't there. Naughty dog, I'm on a new uh trying a new bone broth today. If you're interested in hearing about it. I know you're still scarred from, from my last recommendation. Well, it's the same, it's the same, uh, it's the same brand It's that kettle and fire, but they have a lot of different flavors. So I'm trying the mushroom chicken today. It's not too bad. It's better than regular chicken. I also got a turmeric flavored chicken based. Haven't tried that one yet. They got a bunch of flavors. I have not seen the, I haven't seen the Dana White video now. My brother did a bone broth cleanse, he called it where all he did was drink bone broth for three days. <laughs> yeah, Kelvin, I got him earlier. I banned him earlier. Thank you for reporting that, though.
All right, get a little pullback after that push. Yeah, and 5070 straddle for me doesn't look too bad. A lot of protein too, Meech. Low very low calorie, full of protein. Well, a lot of Fed speakers today. That has, you know, that has a lot to do with the whippy, whippy action too. Yeah. That's right, Elliot. I'm like the Queen's English with my grammar. A little five point candle. So I've got my three two, which is a sixty five straddle. Little bounce. I should be able to reduce my stop and take half off. My one to one is also a sixty five straddle. And then I've got my one DTE and then my NDX or trades. Uh, I don't use a trailing stop for my challenge portfolio, Meech, but I haven't, I, I saw your post. I haven't looked into that yet. And I very rarely use percent stops anyway. Most of mine are all fixed dollar stops. I like to use fix better just from a scaling standpoint because you just kind of, you know exactly what your stop risk is. Now hopefully we just get a little bounce around here between about <clears throat> 50, 70 and 50, 80 right in there. Just a little bounce and my three, two will get up to 30%. Um, Anil, I will let Landon know. Yeah, we're still getting everything situated for sure. So I apologize if, if you guys are getting any additional emails. Yeah, I appreciate that, Emil. Yeah, and like anybody, if you guys, if you guys, uh, there's anything that that seems out of out of place um we had a couple people mapped over who were on the wrong membership i think we got everybody and when i say we i think landon got a, got everybody <laughs> cleaned up but um but yeah let me know if you see anything that doesn't look quite right yeah that was the snag can we had when they when they transferred over uh, some people just got mislabeled in different few different memberships. So we've just been kind of getting that cleaned up before we officially kind of roll it out. Yeah, it's kind of a back end uh, platform each. So we'll still be on Discord. Uh, but it's a it'll it will have a new like uh, a better experience for watching 
the videos and the courses as opposed to the videos just posted in a, in a discord channel. Uh, so that'd be cool. And then, and then there's some other stuff that we're going to be able to, to roll out to you guys as well. I wish we could uh, integrate the streams without zoom, but that's not available yet. Hang on a second. I got to reduce my stop. And then close half. Seven. Welcome, Vital Sign. Good to have you. Yeah, the AM stuff has been doing very well. Yeah, we used to uh, we used to stream in just natively in Discord, which was cool, but unfortunately, they limit it to fifty people. So we'd go back to doing that if they'd give us more capacity. But Meech started complaining because he got he was like on the outside looking in and he was like knocking on the window and we wouldn't let him in. He got mad, so we had to switch over to Zoom. <laughs> All right, so got my stop reduced and my position size reduced on my three two. Still got my one one, which I'm sharing a strike, so it looks a little off there, but that's at 25%. So a little more decay here. I'll be able to reduce my stop on my one to one. Got into that at 830. Seven eighty. That'd be minus 50 cents. Yeah, I'll be doing a I'll be doing some uh kind of checklists and little videos on the on the new video as soon as, as soon as we get everything taken care of. Vic sitting at 13.71. Uh, a couple other things here. I've got a couple of short premium trades in MES. This one's hub hugging the upper call strike. This one is pretty well centered. Both of these have been adjusted. I've got some short premium in Natty Gas. It's pretty much break even after adjustments. Same thing with corn. That one's probably down a little bit after adjustments. My rut duck. Still a chance it could get back down into the duck head, so not doing anything with that yet. VXX, we took half of half off yesterday. Bounced back up today, so just holding the, the remaining piece. Might get that contraction tomorrow morning if there's not a big surprise on the uh, core PCE price index report or unemployment claims.
And then Friday pre-market or not pre-market, 30 minutes after the market opens, ISM manufacturing and revised consumer sentiment. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. E. Allison. I would have to double check based on the credits that I've gotten on the rolls. But I would assume we're pretty close to even, if not slightly green. Yeah, Naughty Dog. I think I like that mushroom chicken. It's pretty good. Check it out. All right, my one-to-ones, it's 27%. I'm looking for 30% to reduce stop and reduce size. K, are you here today? Looks like Dick K is not gracing us with his presence today. <laughs> so, he Naughty Dog, is that, to do. Naughty Dog, is that a picture of your dog you have? It's like your actual dog. Okay. <laughs> are you sure it's not your wife's dog don't you have a dog like that steve <laughs> no i do not what, what looks like it looks like that one my wife got. my wife has a dog like that oh, okay that's what i meant well that's what i meant <laughs> i have three dogs one of them i do not claim i, I thought it was a big one that's furry like that has a type of fur Gold, he's a golden doodle. That's what it is. Got a golden doodle, a lab, and then hers is a what is it? It's a ha have a niece poodle or something like that. Have, yeah, that's right. Ah, Cavalier King Charles. They have two Australian shepherds. Oh, yeah, those things are cool. Yeah. Oh, nice, Waterman. Yeah, I can. Let's see, you do one contract. Well, that's a lot of trades for eighteen hundred bucks. Twenty-five, ten. Let's see, what's the difference between those two? Looks better than uh, anything I tested with that. Yeah, I gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I could I couldn't get anything that really tested well from that perspective either, but. Not quite sure because I just 
just looking at the probabilities in the math mm -hmm. and should have a positive expectancy. All right, bouncing back up. I needed it to stay down yeah. a little bit. I was for a minute. Again, I was about 20 cents from getting filled on my 20% of my first one. Wuga, you wouldn't buy a thirty-five thousand dollar dog. What's wrong with you? So I'm putting together kind of the details for this end of day, that thing I showed you at the end of yesterday, my end of day fly deal. Uh, so we'll do it today. Really nothing to do until about, I'll start looking at about 20 minutes till, till the bell. I got a really cool name for this strategy, which some of you are going to like a lot and some of you are going to hate. <laughs> Let's stick with that. That's all I'm going to tell you right now. Yeah, I would prefer a little down move just to get my profit targets hit. And I can just have some smooth sailing the rest of the way. Uh it is not an an it is not an animal. I'll give you that hint. That's it. It's the only hint. And I'm at 29%. Waiting for 30%. Yeah, barring a big move, Thiago, that NDX should... Should hit max again. By the way, vital sign and anybody else that's new here, uh, just a quick kind of snapshot <clears throat> of kind of the best places to start. If you go to the zero DTE course channel, you scroll up a little bit, there's a new member zero DTE checklist, which kind of lists a few things that I would suggest starting with. Um, and then in the trade plans channel, this is every month I post my trade plan uh, of exactly what I'll be trading. It's got the option to make a backtest links if it's a backtest strategy. And that's all right there in the uh, trade plans channel, along with 
Chad's presentation of how he trades, uh, as well as some of our other experienced members and that how they trade. So those would be the first places I would start so you kind of know what we're doing here. Still waiting on a profit target on my two trades here. There is one power hour number two, 20%. And that was the straddle. I need a little pullback for my other one. Yeah, that's what I need. See what's going on in Stockland today. Woo, Beyond Meat up 32%. Wow. After earnings. Ah. Was up a lot more. That company's, still around. That, that company's still around. Yeah, people still eating fake meat. <laughs> Boeing up almost 3%. Zoom up 2%. Lemonade. Lemonade was on a big run up to 22 bucks. Now it's at below 16. Baidu down seven and a half after earnings. Lyft down 5%. Baba down four. Google down two. Need to pull back. Four hundred seventy six million to the sell side is the early indication for the MOC. So Coinbase, I'm surprised Coinbase is not rocketing higher with Bitcoin. It was up earlier today. At the open, it was up anyway. Yeah, it's still up. Just a little less than 1%, though. Oh, yeah. Or Bitcoin. Yeah, it was up oh, like Bitcoin. 5% or something. So Bitcoin's only up 5%, was up 10. Touched that 65,000 mark and said, no, thank you. What was the all time high in Bitcoin? Like, 69 like 63. Something? I think I thought it was like 63 something. Yeah, 69. 69, okay. Oh, that's always reassuring, Lasosa. Yeah, yeah Mukesh, that's because I'm sharing that with another trade. So if I go to all my trades... So this is the combination of my three, two and my one to one. So I'm sharing a short strike. They're both on the 65 straddle.
You mean you don't keep your Bitcoin in Robinhood, Anil? I heard that was the best place on Wall Street Bet, so I don't know. It's the best place to trade options, I heard. <laughs> need to pull back <laughs> prince of nigeria he's he's a solid guy he always has your best interest at heart <laughs> <laughs> oh, the old prince of nigeria emails those are always fun <laughs> i like to i like to go back and have a conversation with them No, Meech. How dare you? Dick K is not a prince. Dick K is the king. Yeah, there you go. Get it right. You know those Brits, and they're funny dudes. They got a different sense of humor. Different sense of humor than us Americans. Need a pullback. <clears throat> All right, sitting at seventy. Twenty five minutes to go. having trouble pulling back. Yeah, uh, Meech, they're, and they're not really even power hour trades. I got them. I got into them earlier. It's just what I have left on. So I've got my two re-entries from that challenge portfolio. I've got my one DTE on from the challenge portfolio. And then... Um, and then I've got my NDX trade on that I put on first thing this morning. That's it. Pull back a little bit more. Every one of these live streams is recorded, Mukesh.
just go to the live stream channel and you'll see the link in there that you can always watch the replays. Just a little more, little buddy. You can do it. Just a little bit more. Yeah, take about five more points down. Well, I'm not trying to be greedy like you, Chad. <laughs> just I five just need, points. I just, I'll take two. I'm still waiting to hit 20% on power hour number one. Vic's still coming down, though. Yep. So when we get to about 20 minutes till the bell, that's when I start looking at the <clears throat> price of these at the money butterflies. I won't take it unless I can get two bucks at least. And I, and I like to be in before the market on close number comes out. So it's currently trading at bucks 70. So at 476 million to the sell side. Uh, I was going to put on my 2.5 today as well. So let me do that really quick. I have any strikes available? What about a four sixty five right in there. I'm sorry, fifty sixty five. I'm going to go pretty light on this. We've got that PCE tomorrow morning, but. All right, just posted my 2.5 DTE double calendar in the uh, calendar channel. Let me just group this trade right quick. <clears throat> See, I may have gotten close to my 30% when I wasn't watching. I'm still at 27. Wants to come down. All right, reduce my stop on my one to one. And I'm going to close half.
All right, cool. Good to go on those now. All right, so going back to the uh, the end of day fly that I was telling you about. <clears throat> two five Dick K two five. The Wednesday two five. I think you've you've done that before, I believe. Uh, anyway. Back to the uh, the end of day fly here. So it's usually when price is right at a strike that it'll get close. It's starting to get close to two bucks here, and it's not even at a strike. So give it a little bit of time. Yep, Meech, this is the one that's going to have the name that you're going to love. <laughs> oh, there we go. Out of 20% of power hour number one. All right, so we got 15 minutes till the bell, so this is when I... Still 476 million to the sell side. It sits right here in between strikes. We may not get two bucks. We got to get to 70 or 65. Come on down. I prefer 65. All right. I'm going to put my order in on the 65 short put fly at two bucks. See if I can get filled. There's 20%. And I have 20% of something. Power number one. It's touching two bucks. No fill yet. Come on, hit it. It's dancing around two bucks. So uh, 20 and 40% of power hour number one. There we go. Got filled at two bucks. So now so this is what it looks like. So I mean just just this piece here, you know, if it, if it if it closes above 70 or it closes below 60, I mean, you could, you could make max profit on this short fly, which I, I did a 20 lot. So it'd be 4,000. The max risk 
on an exact pin at 65 at the close, which is, you know, obviously very hard to do. So the, my, my absolute max risk is about 6,000 on this trade. But I'm not done yet. So then what I want to do is if, if price goes up, uh, I'm going to sell a put vertical. For a buck, I'm going to put it, I'm going to put an order in for a buck. If it goes down, I'm going to buy a call vertical for a buck. So then, so basically if it, so the, the kind of the idea here is if, if it moves in the last, you know, as soon as I get into my fly, if price moves $5 in either direction, most likely that, that vertical is going to fill and I'm going to have a guaranteed locked in profit uh, with a potential for a big profit. So if we get up to 70 or if we drop down to 60, here. It's got a 40% of power hour too. 1.2 billion to the sell side is the MOC. One point two billion to the sell side. So not a big number. Now, if you you know, the other thing is you you get into the fly. And you get a big MOC number, you could obviously, you know, shoot a quick 10 points and be in pretty good, pretty good position. So sometimes I'll wait to enter the vertical because I don't, you know, I don't want to, because the vertical is essentially, essentially what, if you remember, I got into the fly for a $2 credit. Let me just put this up here so you can kind of see it. That's the call. So here's the here's the fly. If it goes up five bucks and I get filled for a dollar on the put vertical, those combined together look would look like this. So I would lock in, and this is a, a 20 lot. So I'd I'd lock in a, a guaranteed profit of two thousand. And then if it hit that and then went down, you know, I have, I have more potential profit up to 12,000 if it went below 60. And then on the other side, if it goes down $5 and my call vertical gets filled at a buck, I'm, I'm locked in, I'm guaranteed 2000. But then if it bounces after that and goes above 70, I could make as much as 12,000. So that's the, I, that's the idea. You just want a five point move in one direction in the last, you know, after you get into the fly. Out of 60%, power hour number one. So I'm out. Yeah, MRP. So I, I sold the butterfly for a $2 credit, right? <clears throat> and so I had, and then I have a, I have a, uh, Let's just put these at one lots to make it easier. So I sold the I sold the butterfly for a two dollar credit. So that's two hundred bucks, right? Is the max profit on either direction? And then I have an order to buy a vertical for a buck. So my net profit would be a buck or a hundred dollars, right? So if if one of the verticals hits, I'd have a guaranteed profit 
minimum of 100 or maximum of 600. Either way, if either one of them hit. Now, if it doesn't move $5, then I can either risk it, you know, and hope it closes outside the break evens and just, you know, hope it doesn't pin. But that obviously comes down to position sizing as well, right? You know, I'm willing to take a $6,000 risk that it's not going to pin. Or you could also, you know, adjust the price of your verticals. So, you know, you're not locking in a, a full dollar profit. But if you lock in anything up to $2, you're guaranteed a profit. So those are currently, you know, one, one's trading at a little over three bucks. The other one's trading at four bucks. It's coming down. So my, so my call vertical is getting cheaper. And if it gets down close to I 60, got, it, it'll fill for a buck. I got stopped on power hour number two after booking 40%. So I'm out of everything. Yeah. Just let it all expire tomorrow. I'm not doing it with a bot, Naughty Dog. I just manually entered. Minus 1,000 today on the nose. Oh, well, you should be able to see it on the on the dashboard. Just like I look at all my positions here. So just click the click the trade steward logo in the upper left hand corner and then scroll below the chart. That's where all, that's where all your open positions are. Oh, no, that's wrong. Got to put that in. So my so my brother who, who doesn't really trade that much anymore he he was just doing the just the fly piece and then I I don't know if you guys were, some of you were on here I'm sure but I ended up spending about twelve hours on toss on demand one weekend kind of working through different things like this and that's where I came up with the the vertical piece. But if it closes five points away from your you know, your the uh, point of your butterfly, the, the long strike, you are, uh, you know, you can book max profit on that fly. But I like the idea of putting my vertical in for a buck. And that way, if it just if it swings five points away, it'll hit. What did I just get filled on? Oh, my one DTE booked almost 20%. You know, so now my put vertical is getting cheaper because price is moving up. Yeah, the fly can be on either side. <laughs> I got stopped out right at the bottom of that last five-minute bar, and then it just bounced. And it would have been almost a pin. I always have a vertical on both sides. So I have a, I have an order in for a call vertical and a, and for a put vertical. So if it's going up towards 70, my put vertical is going to get close to a buck. It's going the other way. My call vertical would get close to a buck. So I, I do the butterfly and you can do it either on the put or the call side. And then I put in both verticals, one on the put side, one on the call side. Yeah, one-to-one, -one, same number of contracts on the fly and the vertical. All right, so we got we got two minutes left, and you know we haven't we haven't made a move of at least five points away yet. So my neither verticals happened. So 
neither vertical is hit. Oh, my NDX filled at 20 cents. Look at that. Nice. Usually it doesn't fill. Usually it just expires. <clears throat> Yeah, so Morrow, pop quiz, what would happen if both verticals filled? Oh, and there we go. So I got filled on my uh, put vertical because I got it almost five points away. Yeah, you're locked in profit. So... So I got filled on the put vertical. So it looks like this times 20. So I'm, I've locked in a $2,000 profit. Now, if it closes anywhere below 65, I can make more than 2,000. If it closes below 50, 60, I'll make 12 grand. Not very likely, but it could happen. Yeah, so going back to what Morrow said, well, what if both verticals filled? Then I'd be locked, I'd be locked in at a ten thousand dollar profit. So if this thing swang back down to 60, my other dollar vertical would fill, which, you know, in this case, I'm just gonna cancel it. But if I forgot to. And it did fill, I'd I'd lock in 10 grand. All right, so there's the bell. So I made I made two grand. So here is the uh yeah, so I I I sold a I sold the put butterfly and got filled on the put vertical. So the you know, one of the strikes got canceled out, but the net net is that's why I put it on here with the, uh, with the orders. So, I, so you could see, so the net net is plus 2000. Yeah. Not really, not really a great strategy for bots. I mean, you want to have a little bit of flexibility. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to do this if I'm not at the computer anyway, but so it's not a it's not a back test driven strategy, but kind of cool. Um, yeah, I'll, but I'll have I'll have more details on it. Uh, I'll kind of spell out the exact criteria and stuff like that. But at least you guys kind of got a little bit of an idea of what I'm what I'm doing and kind of play around with it, paper trade it. Um, all right, my friends. So tomorrow is the 29th. So Chad will be streaming live in the morning for the Mighty 90 Runners at the Open. And then we will be back again for Power Hour. All right, all. Take care. Have a good night.